Oh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are in the world, a very warm welcome to Silver Tent TV. I'm your host, Siobhan Reardon, along with my dog, Elsa, who occasionally can join in. And when she does, we just go with the flow. Uh, the Silver Tent is a global online platform for women over 50. It's a place to come and be supported and um, uh, to have those dreams that are yet to be realized. It's a place also to share the wisdom that women have earned, I'm going to say, uh, by the very fact that we've lived through decades uh, of being on this earth. And one of the things that we like to do is to share some of that wisdom through Silver Tent TV. And with that in mind, I'm delighted to welcome the wonderful Susie Clark. Thank you, Siobhan. Thank you for allowing me to be on Silver Tent TV. I'm really Oh, it's great. It's great. And um, uh, Susie and I are here to talk about um, something that is passionate to both of our hearts. We've uh, followed a very similar trajectory in life. Uh, Susie has worked for over 48 years um, in the private and principally in the, the charity sector, the third sector, in universities and in organisations. And we're here to, to talk about our passion for learning and the power of learning. And there's a, a beautiful quote by Mahatma Gandhi, um, live as if you were to die tomorrow, learn as if you were to live forever. And I think that's a great place to begin our, our, our conversation, Susie. So um, what, when we were talking, you were sharing about, you're 68 years old, and it's still every day learning and embracing that. Um, so share us a bit about um, your, your work, first of all, at the moment, as a 68 year old, we're supposed to have retired, but you're <laughs> still going strong. So Don't share with us a bit about yeah, what you're doing at the moment. Well, I'm a director of a, of a very busy events company. Uh, well, we were very busy until lockdown. It's called Kit and Caboodle Limited. And uh, my daughter, Tanya, my eldest daughter is the chief executive. I started off as a volunteer with Tanya when I lost my job in, in charity as a director um, uh, because I was having to care for my dad who lived with me. And so I used to volunteer at the events company and gradually it, I've sort of evolved from making cups of tea and doing the washing up to uh, to a place on the board and um, and helping drive the company forward. And there's, it's a really um, public role, or the companies are very public by the very fact it's organising events. Yes. What do you think you bring as a 68-year-old woman to that company, which is a, a young company, isn't it? Oh, it's a very young company. They're all much younger than I am. And the events industry is, is dominated by young people. Um, and to appear cool, generally you have to be fairly young. So I tend to be a backroom girl, but I give the stability and I hope the creativity uh, and a bit of, of wisdom hard earned over the years that keeps the team uh, motivated and, um, and helps my daughter. And, um you not just uh, you know we're talking about your professional life um but mm. you're also one of the most creative women i know and we have some oh. paintings um behind you oh thank you but thank also you. a published writer as well well i had to publish myself because nobody else would but <laughs> I published Butterflies and Baked Beans last November and I'm supposed to be publishing Honey Bees and Heartburn this November, but I'm a long way off being ready to publish yet. So It's a delicious title. Um, tell us a bit more about how the book came into being. Well, Honey Bees and Heartburn, the one I'm writing at the moment, is based on, on the love story. Uh, when I uh, discovered my, my partner on, on the internet, or he discovered me, actually, um, and it's about finding out somebody very late in life that you get along with and then finding out that they have terminal cancer. So it doesn't sound like a laugh a minute, but I used to write humour for the Times. So um, it'll be funny. Um, and uh, baked beans. Well, baked beans is what I do, Siobhan, when I'm having a bad day, especially when I was caring for my dad in the, in the latter stages, he had dementia. And there were days when I just wanted to go to work and I couldn't because uh, I'd lost my job. So I would sit on the sofa and eat baked beans and watch box sets until he called from upstairs. <laughs> And I know it's a book that's very beloved in the tent. Many women have been inspired by it. Um, and also your story in, in creating it and putting it out there in the world. Yeah. 
I, I wrote, I wrote uh, the, the, the main character is called Suki because the lawyer advised me not to use my own name, but it is autobiographical and nearly all of it's pretty true. <laughs> Uh, and again, it um, represents the rich and diverse life that you've lived up to now. And um, uh, we, mm. we were talking about, um, you know, the power of learning and how it is. Yeah. Um, it's the thing that keeps us going, isn't it? Um, you know, we were saying, I, I don't think we're ever going to retire, are we? No, no, I'm, I'm never going to retire. And, and uh, I love to go into a room full of people I've never met before, because for me, it's like walking into a bookshop because everybody has such wonderful stories. And I, I'm just interested in, in people and their stories. But I'm also interested in things like science and technology and, um, you know, and the latest things that are happening. I get really turned on by all of that. So... And you, you're a real living proof of um, that, the power of learning, um, because you returned very late in life to um, your academic career. And I did. Your, yeah. your degree. T tell us a bit about that part of your journey. Well, I, I started off at St Andrews University because I couldn't get into Oxford and Cambridge because I, I, didn't, I didn't have Latin on my CV. So, um, well, those then, are the old days, huh? <laughs> oh, those are the good old days. And so I... Uh, my, my advisor said, oh, well, go to St. Andrews. It's the next best thing. And when I got there, all people wanted to know was, did I play golf? And I said, I only play mini golf. So um, I, I left after a year. I had fun in the one year I was there. I put on a play and made £2,000 because I was so bored by the academic um, sort of studies uh, that I had there. And then I, I just, I, I, dropped, I dropped out at the end of the first year. But um, when I was in my 40s, my uh, late husband persuaded me to um, go back to university because we had Middlesex Poly just up the road. And uh, I went up for an interview and I said, I'd like to do drama and, and art. And, and they said, no, they said, we, we, you know, we think you should do the sciences. And I said, but well, sciences have never been my strong point. It turned out they got paid extra for recruiting women over 40 to study science. And I'm very glad that I, I, my, my first degree was in science and technology. So... And I graduated um, just two months before my husband died of a heart attack. Wow. Um, and kind of, so what happened then? Um, well, I'd already... A big yeah, thing, isn't it? it? Yeah, it was, it was pretty tough. And, uh, but the university had already recruited me, although I was going for a very big job uh, the morning that he died. And... Um, uh, so, yes, uh, I, I got recruited into work-based learning as the national coordinator. And I think that's where I realised that the learning we do, whether we are women at home, whether we are women with a skill or a craft, or whether we are women who sell our services to, to an employer, that the learning that we have that is often never really acknowledged is something that really burns me up. So my second degree, which was a master's degree, was based on the learning that I'd got through my job at the university uh, in press and public relations management. Mm. Work-based learning is, is wonderful and not many people know about it. So let's, let's, let's tell them a bit about it. Tell us a bit about um, your knowledge and your understanding and your experience of work-based learning. Well, it, it, it's a concept that started in America. I think, I think with the Ford Motor Company, when they realized that the skills people have um, as they get older, and maybe they want to, you know, harness those skills but use them in a different environment, um, the best way to do that is to offer academic credit. And so the American University started looking at people's skills, vocational skills, but also the knowledge that you acquire, you know, over a lifetime, and translating that into um, academic credits that you can pay towards an ordinary uh, degree. So that's how it started. And then... Um, uh, at Middlesex, we dealt with a number of really interesting people, for, for example, professional tennis players who had often been playing tennis from the time they were very young and, and they had never uh, gone to university and done a degree. But then they had to find other work once they got too old to play. So we would assess their learning through all the things they did, not just playing tennis, but managing a career and, and travel and all of that. And then they would put that credit towards getting a, an academic degree, which I think is such a great idea. And I don't know why we don't make more of it in this country still. 
yes. it's fascinating. And I was, I was truly, yeah, so I am one of those stories. Um, oh, are you? Okay. Because I did, I call it the fastest masters in the West. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was uh, running a, a HIV organization and oh. I received funding from the European Commission to conduct research into the yeah. impact of HIV, particularly among oh, fascinating. HIV drug users. Anyway, yeah. I'd had to do two different, very distinctive pieces of research as part of our um, grant um, obligation. Right. And I was able to take those and I got immediately accredited with two modules on a three module master's program. Yeah. Yeah. So I only had to actually study one module and then I did my dissertation and lo and behold, I had a master's. So yes, so like that you, yeah, I have that absolute passion that we have many, uh, and I didn't ha even have a degree, Susie. I just had um, O levels. Yeah. GCSEs. But, 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 but why not? Yeah. I, I mean, my master's degree, you're going to love this, Siobhan, but I did a master's degree in press and public relations management because that was my job at Middlesex. But I had been suspended for arguing with the vice chancellor about the death of a student on campus. Um, and, um, and standing up to him about how it would be reported. And so they suspended me across all 17 campuses. But they still paid my salary while they were wondering what to do with me. So I did this master's degree. And in the master's degree, I quoted uh, Middlesex University as one of the universities that had turned from a polytechnic to a university, um, you know, that was suppressing free speech. And, and that goes across the board at British universities. Free speech is not encouraged, uh, except perhaps in the Senate at Oxford and Cambridge but uh, don't get me on that soapbox <laughs> <laughs> so we're kind of walking testament aren't we to the power of work-based learning and the power of work-based learning and being very bloody-minded difficult women so yeah I, I'm, when you were <laughs> sharing that story I was reminded of what the silver tent is for it's for women who are wild wonderful uh, <laughs> wise <laughs> yeah um, and so the kind of let's move further along into um, we call it the third age learning. University of the third age is a wonderful uh, example, but also yes. there's the um, the whole notion of um, third age learning. Yes. Um, so, so let's let's talk a bit about that because I, I'm currently setting up my own on online business, and yes. what I have learned in the last couple of weeks, literally. Um, uh, a, a whole new uh, area of life that I knew nothing about and the way mm -hmm. social media works, the way website construction works. Yeah. Um, I have all the content because I've got 30 years as a, a, an educator yeah. behind me, but, it, but taking it online and into a whole new world. And I have to tell you, I felt so alive. <laughs> mm. Well, if, 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 if learning makes you feel alive, and obviously it does with you and it does with me, um, you're not crushed by it. It can be very frightening. But, um, you know, as Fritz Hoff Capra says, in every turning point, there's an opportunity. And certainly for, our, for my, my company, or our company, Kit and Caboodle, we've had to turn all our, we lost eight jobs in March, right up to Christmas, and we've had to turn all our events into virtual events. So there's been a, a, a very steep learning curve for the entire team there. But for me, because my speciality was marketing and public relations, when the internet r really took off, um, I, I was kind of in danger of being left behind. Even printing, I was an editor of a weekly newspaper and print, but you know, was digitalized. So I decided not only would I continue, I'm an avid reader, but I would also sign myself up for a digital marketing certificate, which I did two years ago. Terrifying, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, look at where you are today. So if anything, I, I suppose the purpose of this conversation is to really inspire people that learning never ends. That, that's right. And, and, and because of my digital marketing, uh, you know, diploma, I didn't realize until I did it, that I've always wanted to write a book, but I always thought, well, nobody would ever publish me. But it made me realize that now, because of Amazon, and you know, Amazon has good bits and bad bits, but if you want to write a book, and so many women on the tent want to write their story, and why not? You can self-publish, and uh, it's not impossible. So technology 
is, is devastating in some ways, um, particularly when it's misused or abused, but it's also very powerful. And I think it's a bit like finance. Many women, me included, I'm, I'm really scared of finance to, to do my tax return is terrifying. But if you can overcome the fear, it can be a weapon and a tool. And with that in mind, I really, because you also offer mentoring and coaching sessions um, uh, to women. I, I, I do. Um, I, I don't offer them openly on, not on the tent, not, not openly because I don't have time, but I do take one or two people who, who I've spoken to and where I feel I can, I can you know, make a change and, and help them. Mm. Um, so we can find out more about you and uh, your incredible um, richness uh, of experience and expertise on your website. T tell us how we would get to that. Yes, um, it's called, it was www.shakespearesauntie.co.uk. <laughs> That's auntie spelled T-I-E. Because, you know, it's men always get the, the headline but I'm sure somebody must have darned his socks and washed his hose. So, you know, <laughs> the woman that stood behind Shakespeare, because it wasn't Anne Hathaway, she was, she was off in Stratford-upon-Avon doing her own thing, you know, with the kids. But um, somebody was in London keeping an eye on Will. And um, I'm, I'm passionate about Shakespeare and the Beatles. I mean, those two things just... And perfume, because I mix my own perfume, but you can't see that on the screen. <laughs> so Shakespeare's auntie um, will take us to your art will take us to your books and yes. um, will take us to, if we want to have a conversation with you yes. uh, in terms of getting support, yes. uh, that's how we can get in touch with you. Absolutely, yeah. Susie, I've loved talking to you. Um, it's so lovely, isn't it, when we meet kindred spirits? Oh, and you, you and I are kindred spirits, for sure. Absolutely, and um, yeah, and to that similarity uh, of our pathways, mm. um, I think we have many more conversations to have. I hope. I'm just going to say thank you so much for giving us your time and for sharing a bit of your wonderful spirit with us. Well, thank you very much. And if it wasn't for the fact that my cat would eat your dog, I'd jump in a car and come up and see you, but you're not in my bubble. <laughs> <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> if the sun isn't shining in your skies, may it shine in your heart. This is Siobhan Reardon signing off for Silver Tank TV.